So I think this morning, um, if you if you do a Christmas lunch, you could have brought it with you. Wouldn't have to leave it in the oven. You could have just brought it to church and it would have been cooked by the time you leave. So yeah. Um, so this morning, um, our message is called labels, um, and it's about labels that we put on ourselves and labels that other people put on us. And um, I know we we are into 2022, quite a long way already. Um, but I I don't know how many of you guys have kept your New Year's resolutions. Um, I asked our friend Google because you know Google knows everything. Um, sort of how many people keep their percentage-wise, how many people keep their um, the New Year's resolutions, and there were so many different answers, so I just picked what I thought would have been what I thought it would be, because it was pretty close to what I thought it would be. So after the first week, about 23% of all people that made a New Year's resolution have let it go. After the first month, 64%, and at the end of the year, around 9%, and I audited that figure and I think it's wrong. Um, I think it's less. Um, keep their New Year's resolution. And and why do we why do we do that? Why do we why do we wait until there's an occasion? Why do we wait for New Year's? I'm gonna stop doing this on New Year's Day, or I'm gonna start doing this on New Year's Day. And and we make these sort of New Year's resolutions. Well you know what, Monday. Monday. Monday I'm going to stop drinking coffee. Monday I'm going to stop smoking. Monday I'm going to stop cussing. It's, we, we have these little excuses that oh, it's going to stop on that day. But what if, what if we went to the doctor and we got a doctor's report saying, if you do not stop X, Y, and Z, you are going to die. You're going to get diabetes and, and you have to make a change now. Why do we always wait until there's a, an opportunity to stop? I'll do it on my birthday, or after that event, I'll stop doing this. I think personally it's because we don't really want to do those things. It's the, the thought is good. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll start dieting, and I'll live healthy, and I'll eat vegetables, and, and you always think, okay, I'll, I'll start doing it then, but people don't actually want to do it, and that's why it doesn't work. And I personally, I don't set New Year's resolutions, I don't even give it a second thought. So, yeah, that's just um, something I thought I'd share with you. So this morning, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a young man. And uh, he was a very, very well-rounded young man. Went to school, went to church, went to Sunday school. All of those things, had a few friends. Played outside under the trees and cycled in the neighborhood. And... Um, sorry. For a while, everything seemed great. And at the age of six, in grade two, his mother gets a phone call. You need to go to school. Sorry. Um, and after a few, a few days, the mother gets to go to school, and the school gives her the news, her son is dys dyslexic, and you will have to go to a special school, and with a bit of help, you'll make it through school. And um, obviously that's, that's devastating news to anybody, and there's no cure for that. But with treatment, you can get better. And um, the boy had to go to a special school, so he had to repeat grade two. And obviously go for therapy and all of those sort of things. And uh, I, I want to bring us back to my last scripture that I finished with my previous sermon, Philippians 4 verse 6. It should be on the board. Do not, 
do not be anxious about anything, but pray about every situation. For prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And present your request to God. That's a good scripture for, for anybody to hold on to. And um, even for, for somebody that think that they don't have hope, prayer and petition with the Lord. So let's continue the story of this young man. And um, repeating grade two, it was, uh, it was actually a very big year. Uh, there was a church camp that the kids went to. And um, he was too young, at the age of seven, to go to this church camp, or this kids camp. And um, it was a it was a mighty camp. There was kids that came back 12, 13 years old, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and it was it was just amazing. It was an amazing camp. It was an amazing trip, and it, it just sort of changed a lot of things. And that young man, at the age of seven, that became his heart's desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to speak in tongues. And one night. At a prayer meeting, much like we have here, in a school hall, that young man said to his mother, he said, I want to speak in tongues. And it was his heart's desire, that's what he wanted. And one of the elders actually said, no, no, that's, that's nonsense. But his mother and his Sunday school teacher believed in him. And they prayed, nothing happened. They prayed, nothing happened. And at the third time that they prayed, they said, you need to start praying. You need to open your mouth and start praying. And the young man did. And when he opened his mouth, he spoke in tongues. He praised the Lord in tongues at the age of seven. And um, a, few de- a few days later, this young man at school prayed for three of his schoolmates on the field to give their lives to the Lord. So irrespective of the circumstances that he was going through, he served the Lord and he started working for the Lord at a very young age. So Fidelis started this year with a story about Jabez. And this is this is actually where our story starts. <laughs> Um, and Jabez, if you guys recall, the, the scriptures, um, his mother named him Jabez because he was born in pain. And uh, I think we get the scripture up. It's 1 Chronicles 4, verse 9 and 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I give birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out and called the God of Israel. Oh, sorry. Oh, that you would like, would you, would you bless me and enlarge my territory? Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted him his request. So Jabez was, and I, I pronounce Jabez, you can pronounce it whichever way you like. Um, we had a debate at last group how you pronounce it, but I'm standing in the front so I said to <laughs> um, So he wanted to be set free from pain. He didn't want to be labelled by his mother and be under that branding of causing pain. So he prayed to the Lord and he was set free from that. A few days ago, probably about two weeks ago, Lyric and I went for a, a bit of a walk one morning early. And we walked a small distance. And when we got home, it was, it was very hot. And we quickly jumped in the pool. And on my leg, there was a little seed of a plant. Now, in Afrikaans, these things are called a klitz. I don't know if you know what that is. So I googled it so that I can translate it. And it is, sorry, and it is, it's, it's called a hitchhiker plant. 
and I don't know if we've got a picture out, but it's those little seeds that you walk past and they, they end up getting stuck to your legs and to your arms and in your hair and they, they, you, there's just no getting around those things. You, you can try, but they get stuck to you. And as I looked at this little seed, I, I, I thought, where did it come from? Because we didn't walk, we were walking on the sidewalk and on the road. So where did it come from? And that's exactly how labels attach themselves to us. Sometimes we don't know where that label came from. We don't know when it attached itself to us. But we are living under that label. And sometimes we label ourselves without knowing that we are labeling ourselves. And these little things go with us. And I forgot my prop. Sorry. <laughs> I actually, I had the prop specially delivered here this morning. So, it is doing what it should be doing. This is one of those seeds. And it's called the devil's claw. And that's exactly what it does. It, it gets stuck to your clothes, it gets stuck to animals, and it is a tricky thing because it's got little hooks. So sometimes removing that label can be painful. And it takes a bit of effort to remove this from you. And it's, it's so empty name, a devil's claw, because that's what those labels are. They, they get stuck to you and, and you start going in and thinking, that's who I am. Oh, people are very nice. There we go. Right, so let's get back on to our story. So this this young man, after he had his episode at church, spoke in tongues, very enthusiastic, spiritual, he went to the he went to the told his teacher this is what has happened. And the teacher responds, obviously having a bit of a religious background, is oh that's great. Um did, did somebody interpret it for you? No, no, does somebody have to interpret that language? And um, he responded, said, no, nobody, nobody interpreted it. And the response was, it was gibberish. So you can imagine the excitement very quickly withered out. But that did not stop him. He carried on because the spirit was stronger than the labels that was being placed on. So, at the end of that grade two square, and that's correct, but the second time, um, there was a prize giving at the end of the year. And this young man, what is this about? I know, the best in grade gets a prize. Oh, he wants that. Being competitive as he is, he wants that. And at the end of the second year, he achieved that. He made a decision then that he is good enough. He wants to achieve that price. And he did. At the end of that year, he got the award for best in his brain. And as it continues, I'm mixing up my notes. And there, there was so much of an improvement that he could go back into normal school. Um, and he could be transferred back into a school. So he ended up going back to the school that he left. But there was a bit of a mix up. Obviously, he left the school before, they did the calculation, and put him in the wrong grade. So he was back with all his old mates in the correct grade, which sounds great, but after a few days, it had to be fixed. And that just made it so much worse. Because now you left, and if you just came back into the correct grade, then okay, who knows what happened? But now you have to be removed out of that grade in the first term and put back into the correct grade. Otherwise, there would be a gap. And um, that, that would have obviously been a little bit tough, and uh, a lot of labels was added at that time. So I want to take us to the scripture again. 
Matthew 21, verse 18 and 19. And it's a very familiar scripture. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. See, a fig tree by the road, he went up to, to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree will. That's very harsh. And um, if you think about it, you can, you can call it a curse, but Jesus just spoke to the tree and said that you will never bear fruit again. And it will. And that's the power that some of these labels have. And it brings us to the power of the tongue. The tongue has the power of life and death. Proverbs 18 verse 21. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those that love it will eat its fruit. So how many times do you speak those negative things over yourself? And you own it. You put those labels on yourself. You put it on your job. You put it on your kids. You, you put it on your finances. Oh, I'm not good enough for I'm not worthy, or I don't deserve this. And we put these little negative things on ourselves without even knowing it. And then we live into them. I'm not saying you're cursing yourself. But once you label yourself, you, think, you start thinking it's true. Many years ago, I, uh, I always answered the phone. If somebody, if somebody phoned with a little joke or something, and I turned out terrible the one day and I stopped doing that and um, so I changed it and I, I made a little phrase so if anybody phone how you doing? I don't know that and the direct translation would be poor but surviving until one day my mother said you're speaking it over yourself and then changed it to rich and blessed and that opened a whole new conversation. Every time somebody phoned me and I said, no, Richard, just don't really? Yeah. So it gave a little hint to talk to them about whatever I wanted. I don't do it anymore. I haven't for many years. But the, the point is, I changed the label by just the mindset. I just changed a little identity because all these little labels are identities to us. And I just changed one of the identities that I wanted to be known by. Romans 11 verse, sorry, Romans 8 verse 11. And the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. Yes. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies because the spirit who lives, uh, because his spirit who lives in you. And that's the point. We command that same power. If, if we continue with this scripture, it, the Lord says you can move mountains with faith. So we have that same spirit in us. And Colin preached about it at the end of last year. We command that. And when the Lord left the disciples, he said to them that they will do even greater things. So we have that power in us. Obviously, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, that's the power. That's the same power that was in Jesus. That's the sort of power that you command. So this young man came back to his school and carried on, played sports, made the sports teams, made the first teams, um, did fairly average in school, not failing, but not extraordinarily well. Went to school with fair grades. And then, after school, decided to go and study. So, he studied um, drafting, started working, got a job, and then after a few years, he decided, yeah, needs a bit more than this, went back, studied engineering, got his diploma, and then after a few years, maybe Saka should be one of those labels, he decided to go study again. And he decided he needs to do a degree. And that was a, that's a big decision. Knowing the difficulties that he has, studying, reading, writing, all of those things, he did not think that he is capable of getting a degree. But he did. 
he continued to, to go, enrolled, and started studying. And everything went fairly well, got good grades. And then year three of what would be full-time study, year five part-time, arrived. And the first third-year subject that he had to write failed. Miserable. Terrible. Never had a result like that in his whole life. And that's when those little labels come, those little demons start talking to you. You're not worthy. You're not able. You can't do this. You're not good enough. But he decided instead of doing two subjects at a time, he's going to do three at a time because failing is not an option. And if he has to fail a few along the way, he's going to finish quicker by doing more subjects. So he made it harder for himself. And by the end of that year, so it was a year and a half part time, writes in his final exam. He said, a little, he said a little prayer in the car. He said, Lord, help me. Because I want to finish this part of my life so I can work for you. Got 95. So that is. So you're gonna, you are gonna get to these crossroads. You are gonna face these challenges. You are gonna get these demons, and some of them are true. I couldn't change that I'm dyslexic. It's a fact. It's a label that I'm going to wear for the rest of my life. But you can make the decision to own that label or to change that label. And it is not in you to change that level that the faith is in God. So even Paul prayed for a thorn to be removed from his side. And the thorn wasn't removed. And I think if you guys check my WhatsApp status, that's my scripture. Because the thorn is still there. But his grace is sufficient. So his grace is good enough. We can't wait for New Year's. New Year's is a long way away now. 
and I don't want your birthdays off, but it, it could also be a long way away. So the decision is now. The decision is with you. And I, I apologize, I, I didn't give this scripture. It, it actually only came to me yesterday. Um, my grand gave me a scripture many years ago. It was one of those little scriptures, a little marker for your Bible. It's 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I responded like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish, I put, it, I put away the childhood behind me. I think I cut off my scripture there. So. I put the ways of childhood behind me. And I know it says when I became a young man, but it's, I think it's applicable for everybody. That there comes a time when you need to make that decision at whatever age you are, that you need to put these things behind you and you need to start living into God's grace. You need to ask him where you want to be and have that in mind that, and, and we're going to be doing a series coming up shortly what is our purpose? And that's what we need to pray into. Where do we want to be? And you can't be there. An athlete can't become a champion by, oh, I want to be a champion. He needs to exercise to become that champion. So you need to live it. You need to grow and with God to that point where your goal or your dream becomes your prayer, becomes your heart's desire. And then you can live into it. 